Welcome. This is part of the Financial Health for Tribal Producers webinar series. And this is the fifth webinar that we've had. And it's moving forward with your business part one, putting your plan to work. Part two will be later on this afternoon in the next hour. This um, whole series is supported by a grant that we have from the Western Extension Risk Management Education Center. And that is also under um, the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture. And you can see the award number down below. Next slide. The project team is myself, um, Ruby Ward. I'm a professor at Utah State University. We also have Trent Tigerstrom, which is the associate director of Tribal Extension at the University of Arizona. And um, we have Vicki Hub from the University of Nevada, Reno, and Juan Arias from University of Arizona. He's the FERTEP agent um, in San Carlos. And this is um, a cooperation between the three universities. Um, this builds upon projects that we've had in the past. And so we want to acknowledge um, some of the project team that was in the past. So let's go on. And so, as I said, this was the fifth in this webinar series. The um, previous webinars were Managing Your Money Part One, Building a Strong Foundation that went over some of the basics of financial um, managing your money and understanding um, how to budget. And then Managing Money Part Two used the MyFi Assist app that's free on iOS and Google Play. And the webinar in the second hour today is going to go back over that app too and show you some more of how to use that. Um, it's also, then we have building your business foundation part one and two. The first part was 10 questions that every livestock operation should consider. This is really the foundation of a livestock plan and it's to help anyone that wants to start a livestock operation or if you're thinking about making changes that can really kind of say, do you have the basics in place? And then the that um, tells you about the basics. And then the part two was the financial analysis. So using budgets and financial statements to analyze your business help to increase your profit and understand the sensitivity of that. And then today on the next slide, we are going to go over moving forward with your business. And so part one is right now putting your plan to work. Um, will your plan actually work for you? We're going to give you some of the real um, basics of how you make that plan work and um, look at what makes it profitable. And that's going to be um, part of the enterprise budget, break-even analysis and sensitivity. And then um, part two is later on in the second hour today, putting it all together. And we're going to go back over the app, but also how to think strategically about your plan and update your plan when you do that. All of these recordings are available on the Arizona FERTEP Facebook page or the Arizona Tribal Extension um, website. And both of those links are there below. So just as a review of, so um, just a little bit of a review of what Trent, um, sorry. <laughs> this is a little bit of a review of what we've done in some of the past uh, webinars and kind of where you need to know some of the information to really kind of go through today. So after I go through this review, to then Trent Tigerstrom is actually going to start chiming in and he's going to take over a little bit on the content here. But um, just the overall idea is that you have profit in your business and then this is the function. This is what makes up your profit. You have your price, you subtract off your variable cost and those are the things that vary with production levels. So your seed, your fertilizer, if I plant a little bit more, if I had one more head of cattle, what are the extra costs for that? Those are your variable costs. And that difference is your margin per unit. And then when you have your margin times by the number that you have, if you know how much you make per animal, which is your margin, multiplied it by the animals that you have, that's the funds that you have available to cover your fixed cost and profit. And that's gonna be a really important concept and those terms are gonna be used as we go into really how we look at our business and how we look at that um, enterprise budget. So, um, and in general, we want more money to be flowing in than money flows out. So we're really looking at what causes our operation to increase the water in the tank. That's our reserve for what happens um, in unexpected situations. It's the profit that we can use to take out of the business, all of those types of things. And so we're really trying to say, how can we get more money flowing into the business and less money flowing out of the business? 
And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Trent Tegerstrom, but I will still chime in here and there as we go through it together. Okay, so uh, thanks, Ruby, and that was a good overview. And if you have any questions left or concerning before you go on about what Ruby just uh, went over on the margins and everything, feel free to go back and look at any of the PowerPoints, any of the presentations before, just to get a refresher on that. And then you can always come back and, and look at this one again and it, make sure it's fresh in your mind. But we'll go over it again uh, several times. Next one. So today our objective mainly is to what's the what is the goal of the plan? So we've talked about building the plan. You have some ideas what you want your operation to be or what kind of operation you want. So you're, we built that up asking the 10 questions and everything. And then we're going to analyze the plan, that plan, your plan, using the spaces, some of the break even analysis and some sensitivity analysis. So we're going to go through a couple of examples and uh, questions on what that would look like. First thing we're going to do is look at the break-even analysis and we're going to use several tools in here and uh, I want to make known that all the tools are going to be available for you to download and use at your own uh, pace and your own uh, several and you can visit back at the webinars to see how to use those tools as well. So we will be demonstrating them hands-on hands so you'll be able to look at that. So don't don't worry if you don't get it all at once but uh, you can come back and, and review this any, any time. Okay? So break-even analysis. What we're doing is using the cash expenses and this is determine the, the cash break-even cost. Now this is just the cash break-even cost that we're gonna look at, but you can also look at the total cost from the economic side taken into the fixed cost. So there's a couple of break-even numbers that you can calculate, okay? You can calculate the yield required to cover costs. You can calculate per pounds of beef produced to cover costs, whatever that variable it is. And we'll show you what that looks like for a cow versus cow calf or, you know, pounds of beef produced. Those units, they can vary. You just have to make sure you're consistent when you're looking at those, okay? So again, like Ruby talked about, we're going to be looking at this uh, margin per unit. Uh, There's the price minus the variable costs and the quantity just of what's left to cover those fixed costs. And we're going to see what the break even price is needed to uh, maintain that to at least cover all your expenses. Okay. So if we go over a couple of the formulas, just breaking that out a little bit, we looked at the profit equation, just what we talked about before. And you look at the price times the quantity minus the unit operating cost times the quantity minus the fixed cost. So right here, the price and quantity is break even. So you go over here in the quantity, total fixed cost divided by the price minus variable cost. And again, don't worry about getting all these formulas right. They'll be there. We have the tools in place there to show you how to calculate and we'll be going over that. So it's okay if this looks like a lot of math and you're or you get, might be getting a little nervous, or don't worry too much about it. We've really got these tools set so we, it's a little more straightforward, but uh, we, want, we want to make sure you understand where the numbers are coming from and to have a stronger foundation for that. So you could do this quantity or the quality on there. So it's total fixed cost by the margin, but you can see it's, it's just a simpler way to do that. And here's the pieces that you're plugging into it. Okay, and then the given quantity price needed to break even versus the quality quantity to break even up there. So and these are the formulas that you're, we're looking at there before. And the, all right, Ruby, you have anything to add? Did I miss something on that or want some clarification? No, I think that we give the formulas out because we feel like we need to and you need to have that deeper understanding if you want to it. But really, yeah. it's learning by doing. And so I think as we go through the example here with the um, branch example, you'll see that they're not nearly as complicated as what they look like on the previous slide. Yeah, that's a, if you, if you, you know, a lot of people see the black box, they want to know how the number is calculated. So we wanted to make sure that you knew how those were being calculated. So this is analyzing the profit on a ranch, a sample ranch that we've been using throughout these webinars. So we're being consistent with what we're using there. It's a 50 head operation with a 75% calving rate. That's just what we use. You, you, you're you going to be in, real important to use your numbers and tracking that. We talked about keeping records. That's where you're going to be grabbing this information to fill these spreadsheets in. 
it's through those records that you're keeping. Now, if you don't have animals currently, then you can take an average from the county or some publication that might you might be available, or you could just plug in there what you're estimating to be, and that would be an estimated budget that you'd be doing. And again, this, this spreadsheet is going to be available, so you could plug in your own numbers. Here's the income on top, like we talked about, just the cows and coal cows. And in this example with the 50 head, we rolled the bulls prices down here in the livestock expenses just to make it easier, like if you were leasing bulls or if, if whatever you're doing on there, instead of actually owning the bulls in this case with the only 50 head. So, or you may be IA, IAing down here and the cost could be rolled into there. So just if you're looking at where the cold bulls might be, we wanted to clarify that, okay? And I'll give you your total income. You see we have per AUI or per calf. That's just the units we're using. It's either, one to what, either way you want it on that. So it's the total divided by there. As you see your price divided by AUI, it gives you $542. Okay, so, so um, Trent, I just yeah. noted it's a mistake that we made there. In the budget itself, it's $552 per animal AUI. But oh, right. on the side, I had a typo there, so it should be 552 instead of 542. Okay, yeah. We'll fix that before we load them up there and, and get them to you guys, so, okay. And then we go to expenses down here. We have our, your, we really limited the number of uh, expenses because we wanted to keep this uh, kind of as concise as possible. So leasing and grazing, whichever way you do, whichever pay, if you have a, lease or if you have grazing fees that you're paying depending on like a forest service or BLM versus what the tribal's offering and whichever way you're doing on your lease on that it gets the grass for the animals and where your animals are staying. Additional feed costs, you may be haying, you may have other things associated with that, some supplementation and others. And then other livestock expenses like your medicines and uh, other materials that you're going to need to provide with that. And then of course there's labor it could be your own, it could be some assistance, uh, part-time part labor that you might get to help with the, either branding or rounding up and fencing and that kind of stuff. So you could just throw all those into labor and input and expenses. Remember, these are variable costs. Go back to some of the, what we talked about before, variable costs change with the number of animals that you have. Okay, so that's gonna vary depending on what you're, what you're doing. Then we get our total down here where we subtract off what we total up here from the above total, which is the income, and that gives us our cash returns over variable costs, expenses. Remember, that's that margin that was talked about, okay? And then we have to go in there because we can't forget about our fixed costs. It is property, taxes, insurance, that kind of stuff, depreciation. We add those in here. And those come down here. Those we said were for $72 per AUY on this case, so we go down there and it was 3,600. So then we have to subtract that off and that's where we're gonna get this final number down here. So we have our total ranch expenses, which is the variable cost plus the fixed cost. And then you subtract that off of the income up there and you're left with the 3,790, okay? So hopefully that made sense what you're doing. We, again, we keep it simple. You don't have to get real sophisticated on this if you're starting off and, and, and don't let it scare you on this. And like I said, the templates there will be able to do it. So we look at some of the numbers over here that we're getting as variable cost. Uh, like Ruby talked about the AUI, it's 542 on this. Variable cost per AUI was the 332. The margin, like remember that formula we uh, Ruby talked about and I talked about earlier, that was two, uh, $220, and then we come down here with the price for calves, and here we're changing from AUY, we're going to calves, except for this one down here is per calf too, I believe, is that right? Yeah. So we go down there, margin per calf is 343, and those are the numbers you're trying to get at. Then we go to the break even quantity that we're looking at, right? This is the, what we're, how many cows would we need to break even on this, okay? So if we have that 719, and we take that divided by the 220, then we get 33 cows, okay? And you do the same thing down here, only where this one we're doing the calves, and we come up here with the 21 calves that would be needed to break even on that. Okay. So the, um, all of the, this budget over here through the total column, those are all the same situations. So, but you can, sometimes you wanna break the budget down into a per head unit 
or yeah. something else that that kind of helps us think about things better. And so in this case, two different options that we did it two different ways. And some people use AUI and or AUI and some people use the per cap. And so there's nothing that's wrong or right about either one of those. It's just two different ways that are common that people makes more sense to their operation and to them. And so um, in order for this operation to make, to at least break even and not cost us money to, for the privilege of having cattle, we need to have at least a 33 cow herd. Yeah. And so that's how you can see the 33 cows, or we need to be able to sell 21 calves every year. Yeah. And so that's what this set of numbers, if you put your own set of numbers in there for um, how many, ca your calving rate, your expenses and everything else, you might have a different situation. But really, um, as you saw here to the side, for either one of those, I really only pulled three numbers off of the budget. And then I just took one number and divided it by the margin. And that gave me my um, cows or calves. Yep. So it's the fixed cost divided by that margin, but the margin for per calf or the margin per cow. And so that's what the difference between whether we got cows from the formula or calves from the formula. Yeah, like I said, it's just, it's, it's just what you're comfortable and what's, what's important to you and how you like to look at these numbers. So I know some other ranchers that do it by per pound of beef produced. So they tally up how the weight of their cattle and everything. So they see how many pounds are sold off of their operation and that's what they use for their numbers. So it's really up to you what you feel comfortable with. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. Okay, so this one, what we're doing, we just took that, uh, like what Ruby was talking about before, and we took our, our break even on the quantity, uh, the cows and the calves, there's your original fixed cost, and we just, just, we're just highlighting where those are right now, okay? So here's the 33 cows, and here's the 21. This is the original fixed cost that we had there. And this is a break even price, cows, calves, and per hundred weight, like I talked about right there. So this is just using the variable cost and using the variable and fixed cost for the whole operation. And you can see the difference on this, but this is the break even prices that you're gonna need on that, okay? So if this creates to cover your variable cost, your per cows are $332, variable cost and fixed cost per cows are 476, but your price per calves because you're going to be lighter weight and you're going to be selling more of those. Your prices are going to have to go up here to 519 or 744. And then per hundred weight. So if you're looking at, you know, what the market's giving you, if you're looking at that, you're on your calves, you might be at the $79 per hundred weight or 113 per hundred weight. So you can look and see where you're at on that. And the idea behind the break even when you're going through this is to say, well, what is that baseline? What is that where I need to make to cover all my expenses. And then is that going to work here? Is it going to cover that? And you can do, as we'll see later here, doing some sensitivity around this, but this gives you that point to say, what's the minimum I would have to sell my animals for in order for me to make this a profitable operation? And that's what we're doing with these. And if you know those relationships, then as you see what happens with the market prices, you have an idea of kind of where you're going to be at. Yeah. So we'll go to the next slide and we're just going to break this down a little bit more again, kind of reiterate, uh, re revisiting those formulas that we had above. And I think it's a little delayed on my end, but I don't see the next one. Okay. There we go. So again, this is uh, just revisiting the formula that we had there. The profit equation, the given price, and then the new website cost. This is a case where we're gonna, I forgot about this part of it, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add in a website uh, to set up that plus $400 per year. So you're adding in this, you're hoping to, that maybe that $79 wasn't enough 
that you needed. So you had to invest in some way that you could maybe get uh, noticed above that market price that you had that break even at the 79. So you're looking at ways, what can I do on this one? Okay, so in this way, you're gonna try to advertise more, set up a website, it's gonna cost you. And remember, that's not really set up as a cost our website is not uh, subject to the number of head you have up there. It's a one-time cost on that. It's going to have it to set up and then the uh, ongoing maintenance cost. So when you add in that and you see down here the quantity, the new fixed cost with those added in there, the 480 and the new margin then, which is 350 that you're going to have on here. You come down here to the original fixed cost was 720 and now we're up to 768. So you can see how the numbers now change. So you're gonna to have to, you had a number of head needed went from 33 cows up to 50, 35 cows. And that's the annual cost. But if you add in these 40, that's 480 plus the 200, then you have to add another cow in there per year. So you're gonna add in that one more. And that's just this bump here for that $200, which is right here. See that? Okay. So this one is just adding in the annual cost here to get up to 680. This one is all cost adding in that 200 and getting this new number. And so your calves go up by one. So you're gonna to have to add another calf, uh, be able to sell another calf in that operation. And then another one to cover all the costs on that. So a total of two calves to get that. And I hope that's clear. So you're hoping that you're hoping that you're able to do that and that could be on another number of cows you have or it can be on the price received on that. So we talked about before. So sometimes it's hard to see decisions that you might be thinking about making a bigger change and you think, well, is that worth it to me or not? This is just a way that you can convert that into something that might make it easier to make that decision. So in this case, it's just saying that it's gonna cost two or three cows a year or, um, you know, two calves a year to have this website, is it worth two calves a year for you? You know, is there something else that you can get from the operation that makes up for that two calves by having this website? Yeah. You could also do this for some, um, if you wanted to put in some fencing or some corrals or some other types of things, you could do the same type of thing and say, how many extra calves would I have to sell in order to do this? And this is what you can use the break even cost formula for to see kind of what it was before and after. Yeah, and we'll be seeing some other tools that will help you out with that uh, in the next session after this one. And talking this about this also could be used for buying new equipment if you're looking for equipment to increase your operations in your area. Yeah. So uh, the next one. Okay, so here's the profit goals. This is another way to look at it. So you're, you want to set what your profit is, what, how much you want to get out of this operation. So the original fixed cost was 72 in this one. And with the 33 cows, uh, 21 calves, the number needed to do the original cost. But say, if you wanted the $3,790 profit out of it, you're going up to this uh, 10,000 now. 999, you're gonna, that's gonna take 50 cows to selling 32 calves to get that kind of profit, assuming the costs are adjusted for in this as well. So, and your fixed costs are gonna stay fixed the same because they're not subject to that number of head per se. So it's just the variable costs are gonna be adjusted on that. Now, if you wanna kick it up to a $5,000 profit, which then would be a $12,200 here, you're gonna need another six cows or and 36 calves to get that. So you're gonna be bumping up here another four cows on that from the 30, uh, 3790, okay? Then if you wanna go up and get a bump of your profits up by another 10,000, and remember where we got the profits from, right? This up here, price times quantity minus the unit operating cost times quantity minus your fixed cost. And you come up with this uh, 17, 20 and that gives you that you're going to need to break even on that is 78 cow uh, herd and you're going to have to have 50 cows a year okay to get this additional profit that you're seeking out of that operation so this is another way just to look at how much would i need what's my profit goal on it if, if you're thinking this may or may not be a full-time operation maybe it's a supplemental and i need to get so much so much income out of this operation, 
above all the costs that I spend. This is one way where you can try to shoot for that target profit that you're looking for and see how many animals uh, are going to be required to get you to achieve that, that, that level of profit that you're looking for. This also can help with uh, setting your goals in yeah. different numbers so that you know what it's going to take to get to a certain goal. So as you're achieving them, you can keep um, editing or, you know, growing with it through this equation. I think that Vicki's right there. And it's not just setting your goals and saying where you can go to, but if you know that you want this to be like a full-time operation where it covers all of your um, living costs and stuff, then you can kind of figure out what that profit needs to be and how big you would need to do that. And then you can see if that's realistic. And if that isn't realistic, maybe we need to go back and think about kind of how we're doing it. And is there a way to sell what we're doing for more money or you know something else? Or is there a way that I can get to that thing? And so that just kind of gives you more control. And so it's not to say that anything is the right decision, but it's just to have more control that you can make a plan. And like Vicki said, set your goals. You know what I need to, where do I want to get to? And then you can start to say, okay, well, what can I do to help get me there? To make informed decisions. Yes. Trying to accomplish your goals. Right. And remember, this is just the, one of the tools we have to kind of do that. So when does we move to the next part? Remember some of these numbers that we're looking at here, because remember, we're just also looking at the, here's the profit level that we're doing, and you're going to need this number of cows, but you could also get this with, remember, pounds of beef sold or number of cows or whatever you're going to do on that. So there's other variables you could look at too, you know, so we can change the price. And in order to do that, what we're going to be looking at next is the sensitivity analysis. So next slide. It's coming. Yeah. So what the sensitivity analysis does is allows us to see how, how uh, vulnerable we are to price swings and other increases in our expenses and how vulnerable your budget is or your goal is to some of these fluctuations that, and certainly we've seen that a lot this year with the COVID and the impact that that's had on the cattle market and some of the other even hay markets. So you wanna be aware of how much of a safety factor you have around those profits that you're looking at on there. So we go to the next slide. So we can say, yeah, you made your best guess, you know, you're setting this up. So you kind of have an idea what your base is. You want to determine what would happen if something went wrong. So you want to see, well, what if prices tanked? What if they went higher? You know, how much uh, is that going to impact my operation? And you have to look at it, that the good, the bad, and the ugly components of that. So you, you want to look at multiple cases of this and see where you're at and look at it from the revenue side, look at it from the expense side and see where you're at with that. And change one assumption may cause bigger changes as a result as we're gonna see here. And Ruby's gonna be calling, uh, bringing up one of those tools we were talking about. And she, we're gonna be running through some examples of how to take those numbers that we did, just looked at in the budgets and really try to look at some of these changes that can occur over time. So uh, as soon as Ruby gets the spreadsheet up, we will, uh, just run through some examples. Again, this, the spreadsheet's gonna be available uh, so for you to download along with all the other ones in the budget. You want me to unshare, Ruby? Yes, please. Okay. So you should see my spreadsheet now. Okay, there you yes. go, Ruby. And so this is just a simple um, tool that Trent and I have used for several years. And um, it's just a place to kind of get you started and to, it does the math for you. Um, so over here, we in the green boxes is where you put information in about your own operation. And so you can see there's not many green numbers that we need there. But um, this is the revenue that we took off of the um, cattle example that we did with the 50 cow head with the 75% calving rate. And then the feed cost, the pasture and the other feed um, came up to 47.87. There were other inputs that were around 8,800. 
And then our labor was 2980. So we put those numbers in. There's a place to put in a marketing amount, but we don't have, we didn't have any in our budget. And then the overhead or the fixed costs were 7,200. And we really can use the words overhead and we use fixed cost interchangeably. And so we really have here, but it's just those, the costs that you have to have for the whole operation, but they aren't a cost per unit. And so that's the depreciation, um, the property taxes would be in the fixed cost, some of your equipment would be in the fixed cost. And so that gives us um, our total expenses are here, just adding up all these green numbers, that's 23,810. When we subtract it from our revenue, our sales up at the top, then that gives us 3,790. Um, there's a place for income taxes, and I have 10% in there, but you could zero that out um, and have it or not have it. And then um, over here, if your revenue is 100%, then all of these other costs are 60% of your revenue. So your gross margin is 40%. And so here the margins express not per unit, like per AUI or um, per uh, CAF, it's expressed as per dollar. So 40 cents of every dollar is available to cover fixed costs and go towards profit in this situation. So um, if we want, added that website, um, it was gonna be about $500 a year, which was, would increase those overhead or fixed costs by 7%. So if we added that website, then it's really gonna cause our profit to go down by 13% if we don't do anything else. So sometimes something that a website is not a good decision or it's a bad decision, it's what else it affects in the business. And if it's just gonna be a website there that doesn't affect anything else, then in this case, it's gonna cause that profit to go down by 13%. But, and I think it's, yeah, it's important to point that out that this is not always just a dollar for dollar change in the operation when you're making these kind of adjustments on there. They can have, like we mentioned earlier, a larger impact or a smaller impact depending on how, uh, what, what it is you're, you're implementing here. So, mm -hmm. it, it, so yeah, because in this case, it um, was actually a little bit more that was the, um, the change down here in the profit. So if we um, though use that website to help market our animals and we um, can sell them as like a quarter beef or half beef to people to get a process and we can increase that and so say we increase our revenue by 5%, then that website helped us increase our profit by 23%. We can see that down here. So that, and remember, this is covering the cost of the website too. So that's all included in there now. So um, we would say that that looks like a favorable decision. And if we wanted to see like how much we would have to increase up here to do it, we could change that to 4%. We, we get a 16%, 3%. Mm -hmm. We get 9%, um, 2%. So in order, you know, there were about even to where we were before. And so in order to have that website make it work, we're gonna have to increase our sales by about 2% would be close to our break even there. It's just a little bit under 2%. But if we could get up to 5%, then we're good. But again, if we don't do any, we don't get any change in sales, then it's actually gonna end up costing us and lower our profit by 13%. So this one is just something that I think works really well, especially if you have more than one person that's part of the operation. You can sit down around and, around and say, well, what happened if this? Well, if we did this, then what could happen here? And it's automatically doing all the math for you. And so you can quickly kind of see the changes. And I always say it's a lot more fun to play with changes here and lose money than it is to actually do it and to lose money and have to cover that in real life. Yeah, and this, so, this, go ahead, Juan. Yeah, this will be a great tool to analyze to see if this uh, is going to be an important decision to make in the long run. If it's even is it, is it even risk uh, a risk taker or not? It's really important to have this in your plan to make a decision together and use the tools that are, that are already available that we're showing right now 
this will be much easier to do instead of taking the risk and not knowing what's going to happen if you increase or decrease. Yeah, so, um, I mean, there's all, all sorts of scenarios out there that we could come up with on this. Vicki, you, you, on your operation, you, you focus a lot maybe on some uh, energy supplementation in the, uh, in the winter, uh, holding the animals over, or, and this may or may not apply to everybody, but it, it is a common practice out there. Would this be something you would use and maybe run uh, an example through with Ruby on? Yes, yeah, so this makes it so easy to compare a supplement versus maybe the one that you're using. Um, for us, I'm on the Cheyenne River Reservation in South Dakota on the Cheyenne River. So we have lots of hills, so we are constantly looking for a supplement that is cost effective, but also works, simply put, because if we don't have our cows supplemented in the winter, we just don't get the breed back um, in the summer. So this is one of my favorite tools that we are bringing to you guys because it's just so easy to put in a feed cost um, and compare it to what we are using and uh, be able to. So, I mean, you'll have to compare benefits or what you feel like those benefits are um, from the label subjectively, but this just puts, you know, the dollars to the paper and lets you know, you know, so how much I think that sometimes, you Vicki, you can um, have like a lower fertility if you, in your area, where if you don't always supplement because your condition of your animals isn't as good. And so if you have lower fertility and that revenue, so you have 3% less calves to sell, that actually in this, with this set of numbers, and it might be different in Vicki's operation because her numbers might be slightly different than this, but just a 3% drop in fertility. So your calves are 3%, either they're 3% lighter or you have 3% less calves. That actually drops your profit by 22%, yeah. which is kind of scary. Very but quickly. The opposite side is if we do something with some of that um, things that can keep our animals and increase that fertility, then a 3% increase can also, with this set of numbers, can actually increase by that too. So even if this causes us to go up a bit, you know, the feed cost can go up by 5%. And if that got our revenue, our fertility, or the weight of our animals up by 3%, and this set of numbers, you're still looking at overall, it's going to increase your profit by 16%. Exactly. So sometimes the increase is worth it. And that's really where this can show you. Um, I think with any feed supplement, you don't know until you use it. But if you do your research and you feel like it's worth the investment, um, you know, it normally pays off. And I think that sometimes I've seen things though, and I think Trent has too, where people pay for supplements that they didn't need. And so, or they were the wrong supplements for their area. And so you can also have situations where, you know, maybe it didn't change this at all. And we, but we increased our feed costs by 10% because of these supplements, but they weren't really right for our animals. And so it can actually decrease your cost. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, be careful as well, because you can over supplement and then you are literally just um, wasting money and your cows will pee it out or poop it out. But you know, a cow can only utilize so much. So that's very important to consider when you're looking at changing something up. And as we're talking about the fertility change, we realize that uh, there is a, a multi-year impact on that. And we're just looking at this from the more, uh, from a, a little bit more simplistic component of that. But we do have tools that if you want to look at a multi-year impact, we will get to that later on. But right now, just for a quick analysis, looking at some of this, <clears throat> this will get you in the ballpark looking at some of those questions. So we do recognize that. So if you're saying, well, what about the multi-year effect? We understand that. But what we want to do is get you in a position where you can make some of these 
analysis and kind of play around with your numbers to see what kind of impacts like uh, we know that the COVID when COVID hit the market went down what kind of percent loss did we see? And it's important to realize that this is this tool is so handy because every single ranch is different uh, based on geography, um, the nutrients of your soil, um, and so you know just because you see your neighbor having something that works so well, you really have to make sure and do your due diligence with these financial papers um, and doing your research to make sure it's a good fit for you. And so in a case like the, what we were just talking about here, supplementation for, you know, in the Arizona and in the, in the desert regions, you have drought to contend with. Well, you're going to have to potentially supplement in, during some of the drought to do the same kind of it, mitigate some of the impacts we're talking about if you're going to the winter time on this. So if we graze around year round in a lot of most of parts of Arizona and we're not really feeding in the winter per se, if you have the drought in the summertime, you will see the same kind of impact on the fertility and, and on the drop in the pounds produced uh, on for your calves and the drop in the body condition score of your, on your, your animals. So be aware of that too. And that's how much, again, you're going to get out there and there's feed supplement, but you can also, if you really wanted to get technical on this too, you could say, okay, the feed's going to go up by 10% or 5% but I also need to get labor to get that stuff out there, right? So I'm gonna to have to bump up, I'm gonna to have to get somebody to get the supplement out to where the animals are. So I, I'm gonna to have to increase my labor by say by 2%. Okay, so we're adding a, a, some additional costs on it that we had. So now how much are we gonna to have to increase our revenues by to cover that 8%? Is it gonna be the same 3%? Is it gonna be 1%? So it's somewhere between a one and two percent, and I can even do something like a one point three, yeah. and you know I'm getting pretty close and stuff. So um, this is an Excel thing, and it's just displaying whole percentages. But if you click over here, then you can actually have it display more if you want to do something more. Um, yeah. So in this case, you need. Um, Oops. Yeah, about 1.2% increase. Yeah, whoops. Yeah, so just over a percentage. But if you don't care about that level of, um, right. I think sometimes it's easier to just have here and do 1% and see that we're really close. So it's just over 1% or this is where 2% gets you. Um, we did it as percentages because then that works for lots of different situations to just put a percentage change in there. And it's easy to kind of put them in. But like when Vicki was talking about a supplement, sometimes when we get the bill for the supplement, it might be like a $500 supplement or something else like that. So if I have a value that I wanna figure out how to put it in as a percentage, if I just over here, or on a calculator, just take my $500 and divide it by um, 4787 would be my feed costs. Then that'll tell me what that percent is. And I can just put the percent in over here. And so that's the way we can convert something to a percentage to be able to, so just, you just take the amount that you wanna put in and divide it by whatever is in the green number and then that'll convert it to a percentage and you can put it in there. So it's a little bit cumbersome, but the percentages make it, I think, a lot faster and easier to think about it. So we did it as, in terms of percentages. Um, yeah. I think Trent was also alluding to things like with COVID and the prices were dropping. Yeah. So sometimes um, we don't really know what that's going to do to our profit until the end of the year after we've already faced it and have the loss. And at that point, it's hard to have enough time to really go to the bank and do some things to try to make adjustments then. So even though this is painful, um, if we're gonna have like a 10% price drop, it's nice to know what it might do to us. In this case, mm -hmm. it does bring our income down and our profit down quite a bit, but we can take a 10% price drop and still be profitable. 
So we're not going to be making as much money, but we're not going to be losing money either. And we could even see like how far we can take that down. Um, to get it down to zero. So minus So you can see like 20% we can't take, a 15%, um, oh, I should do that as a negative. It's getting pretty close to zero. So just we can't take a complete 15% drop in price and still remain profitable. Yeah, so that's, and that's what we, the point of this tool and point is that we know on the break even, we know kind of where what the animals are, you know, how many we need per head, how many we need per pound. So to, where that break even is on for our, our net return or income on this. We know where our gross margins are on this. So this is a way, like we said, there's ahead of time saying, how vulnerable am I to some of these impacts and how do you, how you go about analyzing it? So you look at that even by historical, look in your region, talk to some of your neighbors and say, well, what kind of impacts have you seen price swings and stuff? So you could plug that in from a local level, what, what it looks like. And then if you, if you can tab in this and remember as you're doing your examples, do one change at a time to see what it is. Uh, because if you do all changes at once, you kind of mask them. But if you need to add feed costs, you need to do other things, add more labor, decrease labor, it's, it's, you can do all those in here and kind of get a sense of what that's going to be and a sense of how much that's going to impact my operation and what I may have to do to change that if I really want that change to occur. And, and that's the point of giving us sensitivity so you can do it here in a simpler tool to use to, to look at these situations. But you can add in, uh, like we just said on the one, the feed and the labor to get the things out there, the marketing. So if you wanted to do something on the marketing, maybe there's a, uh, whatever you want to do to decrease your labor and add in marketing where you're going to do something instead of paying somebody else, you have a website or something. So those are things that to look at. Um, I think sometimes too, you think, well, if the price is going to drop, if I just drop my labor by 15%, I'm going to be okay. Right. But a 15% drop in your price is not the same as a 15% drop in your labor. Yep. So here, even though your labor costs would go down by 15%, you know, you're still, your profits down quite a bit um, because that everything's always going to be the most sensitive to a change in your revenue. As long as you have a positive profit over here, um, your net income is positive, then anything drop in revenue is always going to be your most sensitive amount. And so yeah. even doing like a 15% drop in feed costs, which that might be difficult to do, or if not impossible, that still isn't enough to get you your revenue back, your profit where it was before. But um, you can at least start to look at well, here's what I'm gonna, here's what I'm facing. Is there a way to do this? Um, do I need to try to start to get one of the loans? Is there a USDA program? So sometimes we've had programs come out, but you need the right types of records in order to qualify for that program. And it takes a little bit of effort and it's a lot of hassle sometimes to get the paperwork done and get it and persistence. But then you can say, okay, but if there is this program that can give me these, you know, some money back, then um, maybe that'll make up for it. You know, so it is worth me trying to pursue that program and have the records. And there's been various USDA programs. Um, the FSA had the coronavirus farm assistance program in June and throughout the summer, so. Yep, so that's a, that's a good overview of a tool that's gonna be available along with the budgeting tool. So you'll be able to use all, all these things that we're talking about. You can kind of see how they're, uh, how they're used and also the importance of using them and where you can grab the numbers from. And like I said, don't worry if you didn't get all of the, all of the numbers and like how things were calculated at the, from this webinar. You can always go back, refresh, look at the numbers, look to where they're at, download the spreadsheet, plug in your own numbers. And you know, you may not get it right the first time, that's fine. You just keep 
uh, playing with it, eventually you, you, you'll get there. So we'll go back to the, see if there's any additional questions about either the sensitivity or the break even. And remember, this afternoon, or the next webinar here in, an, uh, in a short little bit, the next hour, is going to be taking some this kind of to the next level a little bit more, looking at maybe adding a piece of a, a equipment or truck, or how should I do that, looking at different options within the app itself. So this is just on your phone, having the app downloaded and where we're going to be at. So you'll be able to go back. And just after we're going to run through several examples, and, and one of the examples we might uh, that we're going to go over might just fit your operation pretty close. So you might be uh, uh, say, "Well, I can do that." Oh, yeah, I'm, I, that looks familiar to me. Well, how do I do that, and how do I analyze that? So uh, I encourage you to. Is there any questions out there? I didn't see anything. So, but anyway, uh, Ruby, has any last parting words as we about wrap up this session? Um, just that all of these things, sometimes the break even can be used to do exactly what the sensitivity does. It's just a bunch of different tools that you can use to look at your situation. And so it's going to be different times where different tools are valuable for you. And we'll just continue on with that in the next hour. And, and uh, we apologize there. Uh, we lost Vicki, one of our cohorts here, that uh, she's having some computer issues. And that's one of those things they're working out to try to get a, a new computer. Again, those are expenses that happen. And uh, we did a sensitivity about a new computer and what that's going to be on there. So maybe we can help Vicki out when you're doing this on the next one. So we really miss having her on here and some of the input. But uh, she will try to get on for the next hour. Uh, Juan, is any parting things that you want to get uh, mentioned? Yeah, I just think uh, using this tool will make you take the best guess in your operation instead of just assuming you're going to make profit or not. Using the tools I mentioned earlier is going to be a great opportunity for you to visualize and plan ahead in your operations instead of not having an idea. You will be you have a concrete idea of what you're going to have in, for profit and not profit, and, and hopefully you'll be able to use these tools and we'll upload them for you guys in the, our websites mentioned earlier in the uh, webinar. All right. All righty. Thank you, everyone. With that, thanks, everyone, and have a good afternoon, and we'd like to see you back here in another 10 minutes or so as we start uh, uh, webinar number six. Thank you. Thanks.